descend to the second highest peak in Taiwan. We started at uh, what, 4.30? Yep. It's seven o'clock now. That's Chilai San yep. in front of us. That one there. Yeah, yeah, really tough climb. I'm feeling the altitude already. Hey, man. Hi. <laughs> JC has been up here before. We still have a far way to go. Just stop in to get some good shots. It's eight o'clock, another stop. Here's a nice little map which shows what everything is. That's Jiayang. Oh, it's not snow? That's Jiayang, according okay. to this. So, so Dajian, Shreshan. It's in the clouds. Oh, I believe it's straight okay, ahead. Right over there. Okay. Yeah, that way. Okay, my according mistake. to this. I'll delete that picture. <laughs> it's okay. I thought it was snow. Mm. Mm -hmm. Doja Chun is that matches hill? up with yeah, that okay. point. Yeah, that's right. It's right. This is the Shueba Visitor Center. We just paid 310. That's NT to get into the park. Uh Uling. What are you learning on the map? Okay. It says you are here. Yeah. If I remember right, the I think that's it. Yeah, Wuling yeah. Station. Yeah, that, that should be it. That's it. Okay. So, so we, we just are... drive down here. Okay. Get, get our permits done. These little A-frame things, yeah. they're real tiny. Look at those umbrellas. Nice. So that's where we had to show our permits. The last time I came was six years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I had to get a police permit mm -hmm. to enter this trail, but now, they're saying for all of Taichung, you don't need a permit at a police station. If mm -hmm. you're going into these kind of trails, all you need is a mountain permit. Yeah, which we just turned in there. And the guy gave us a stamp on this paper, and we are good to go. So, you open that up and a, and a rabbit pops yeah. out. No. See? No. Oh, it's a hand warmer. Hand warmer. That's right. Yeah. So, thank up you. The... Thanks. That's very, very you're welcome. kind. Look at my first casualty. Looks like I peed. I put a soft flask in this pocket, this soft flask, but I had it in a bag, so I thought it was okay. And I'm not gonna do that now. <laughs> it's gonna go on the outside if I can fit it. 10.30 a.m., we're about to start. This is the Nissan X-Trail, which we rented. Not a bad car, got us up here. What are you still fussing with? I'm debating whether I should bring this jacket or not. I've got the puffy jacket and a raincoat and a long sleeve shirt in there. I don't debating uh, whether it will be enough. All I have is my rain jacket and my puffy. That's it. That's it. Okay. My fjallraven. Is that but, what you brought? Uh, yeah. So I'm going to use yeah. that as like my wind jacket. But when you get up there, you might want something to to put on you when you stop for a break. I'll put my puffy on. Yeah, my puffy is at the bottom. Let me. <laughs> Why don't you put it at the top? I'm going to get it. <laughs> I thought I wouldn't need it until you get to the top, but I'm wrong. Well, this will give me an opportunity to look through all your gear. Clothes. Wow. Oh, Jesus, that's big. Did you see that? It's a bumblebee. Yeah. Wow, that's a huge bumblebee. Yeah. Did you bring a towel? I have like a small one. Here's the trailhead, beautiful pond, 7.1k to our lodgings for the night. <laughs> All right, up we go. Relentless steps. 
and uh, no like benches unless you sit on one of the steps. Yeah. Is there a subway on this mountain? Yeah, there was one in the Ufuuding. <laughs> really? No, I'm don't not don't lie. No, no. no you got that subways. from Zhonghua. Zhonghua. All right. There's the purple gang. The purple team. <laughs> Three tenths of a kilometer. To go to Chika. There's a cabin. We're going one mile an hour. Taking a break by the poop sign. How to poop in the wilderness. There is no toilet between Chika and San Leojo, which is 7.1K. So, if you gotta go. 7.1. No, it's 5K. Oh. Yeah, we're at the 2K It should be 7.1 from way down yeah, there, yeah. right? Uh, Mei Guo. Mei Guo. I'm going to eat Bigo. Bigo. Oh, it's like a big deal. It's only a few words. Bigo. Bigo. Nice one. Just came around the corner. Check out the facilities in here. Pretty spartan it looks like. Are we inside or outside? <laughs> oh, that's outside. Okay. So right now we're at 2460 meters. It's unfortunate as there's a bunch of trash down there. I was just given some cashews by that nice lady right there. Sure. We just said goodbye to a nice friendly group who offered us tea. Very friendly as usual. Yeah. See, I couldn't finish it. Too hot. Yeah. He had to secretly dump it out. I think if I could do it again, I would put this on the outside of the strap of my backpack, uh, hanging to a carabiner. People in Taiwan are so polite. They will ask you if you want to have tea, like at the different cabins along the hike. So it's helpful to have a cup ready, one that you don't have to dig into your backpack to get. Now we have 5K to the next cabin. We've been on the trail for an hour and 38 minutes. Okay. There's no bugs. I love it. <laughs> so Jay uh, just mentioned that he doesn't know what Gorp is. And um, of course, Gorp is a... Do you? Is a trail standby. Oh. It stands for good old raisins and peanuts. And usually there are some M&Ms inside. Mmm. And you but have a lot. I, I didn't use M&Ms. I used uh, Pablerone. What? Pablerone. Oh, oh, those chocolate things. Oh, okay. But you said you didn't use uh, peanuts, right? You used... No, I substituted, that's right, cashews and almonds. So it's Gorka. Gorka. We're sitting on the trail. It's actually not cold. I'm sitting, My butt is cold because I'm sitting on a wood... Railroad tie? Yeah. It's a step. Yeah. Keep my ass from getting wet. Frog. Frog seat. <laughs> A <laughs> sit pad. Where do you, where can I buy one of those? Do you know what it's from? No. My niece and nephew, we bought them these little paddles. It's for Nerf, like paddle ball. Oh. And they broke them. And I was like, what can, how can I use this? The middle is foam. Okay. And I just ripped off the frog. We're getting above tree line. Steady as she goes. That's right. And we're getting close to the crying slope where we will be crying like babies. That's what they call it because it's steep. We really have to film this because this is the first place we've seen benches. <laughs> we just met a nice guy, that guy. Getting close to halfway, as you can see. 3.4 to the trailhead that way. And we're going to 369. Only halfway. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that one must have been struck by lightning or something. Old man's beard. That mossy stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's steep up there. Flip it around. There's a bird egging us on. Yeah, suckers. We can fry. I think the altitude is getting to us, huh? Oh. Hey, 
We're at the beginning of the crying slope. They are a group that leads blind people up here. Hi. Hey. We're gonna go up there and take a break when these people come down. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. Well-known slope of pain is the work of snow erosion during an ice age. Yeah, it's too foggy, you can't even see it back there. The crying slope it will be right there. What's he carrying, a whole refrigerator? <laughs> As soon as this guy comes past, we're gonna start going up the crying slope. He's a porter, I guess. I hear people. All right, here we go. It would be a nice place to take a picture, <laughs> but it's all white. A lot of people coming down. I don't think we have too much further to go. At least to, to the first summit. Yeah. And then, uh, what, a couple kilometers after that? Yeah. We'll be at our destination for the night. Let's do our crying imitation. <laughs> <laughs> we just climbed the crying slope. <laughs> How you doing? Hanging in there. The red cedar is kind of disintegrating and it's falling down here. There's all these chunks. First 3,000 meter summit in Taiwan. Up there, I'm out of breath. You can see something peeking out over there. Meters. That's 10,000 feet, y'all. It got cold. Let's get going. This is probably the nicest trail yet. At least rocky anyway. You know? Yep. Oh, you can actually just walk like a normal human being. I don't know how long it'll last. But whatever gets us closer to the cabin, I'm all for it. What? Landing's there. There? Yeah, right in front of you. Oh. Wow. For those mountain rescues. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Check it out. It ain't cheap. It ain't cheap. Yeah. Someday when I buy a helicopter. Come up here. <laughs> Actually, private helicopters are probably not allowed in Taiwan. Which way? This way, that's where the steps are. All right. Before summiting, I had a bladder in here. I don't like washing those tubes, so it was kind of a pain for me to, every time I needed to refill my water containers, I had to pull the bladder out. Of course, there's stuff in the bag already. I did have a bottle in this side pocket, and attached to a carabiner on the front, I had my vapor anti-bottle bottle, which was half a liter. I also brought two Solomon soft flasks. Rhino headlamp, this got me through the black forest when we woke up at four, left here's the moon. It's probably like 4.30. And we're gonna start heading up the trail. Entrance to the Black Forest. And we just came from the San Liu Zhou 369 cabin. We're going to the main peak of Snow Mountain. There's some other people right there, so we won't be alone. I don't know if you can see that. And JC is reflecting <laughs> right there. That's it. Take a little break. The stars are gone. 
right in the middle of your screen. That is the way to navigate this forest so far. These reflective arrows, if you're going through in the dark. It's all thanks to you, man. The guy behind the camera is your third time. Second, second. second. This is what I summoned it in. It's the Solomon Active Skin 8. And in it, I had my puppy here from Nikulo and my Fiao Robin rain jacket. It fit my two liter bladder there. Flasks, snacks, foam, tissues, etc. Hey, Snow, we didn't see you. It peeks out. Jesse called you a bump. <laughs> Look down there. Yeah. Wow. We have, what, 6K? Yeah, a little over 6K. Here, look. <laughs> this was standing by a marker. 5.9. <laughs> to the car. It's clearing so up. We're going yeah. to get rid of these raincoats. It was raining in just 20 minutes. Ago. I know. The weather is so unpredictable. Yeah. And the time it was raining, we were at the cabin taking a break. We put our pack covers on, and we thought we were going to go do this whole 7K in rain. I was going to wear rain pants. I didn't film a lot of this because I didn't have battery power. Luckily, I had a battery bank. I charged up when we got back to the 369. And Jesse, I hope you got a little bit of juice on your yes. phone. Yes, I do. This is heavy, but this power bank is a lifesaver. My iPhone went dead three times during the trip and I had to charge it. Uh, JC also used this charger for his, for his iPhone. If uh, you just need a charge to you know, send out a message or you know, use GPS in a pinch, you can get maybe a 30% charge out of something like this, which is much lighter, but uh, you can get a bunch of charges out of this, maybe three full charges. But this also doesn't work optimally in cold weather, 15 to 45 degrees Celsius. And we were up at like lower than seven degrees, which is the reason why my iPhone was failing me in the first place. I thought my watch is almost dead, but it keeps, it keeps living on. We are not going up there again. We're going that way. Some donuts. Yeah, they're chocolate donuts bought at 7-Eleven. Incredible trip and thank mm. you once again. Oh, no problem. For setting it all up. We've we tried since May. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it often happens like this when you want to get one of the peaks, high peaks in Taiwan, and you have to deal with all kinds of delays. Like the last time I tried to hike snow, I, I was delayed three times because of typhoons. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I had the permit in hand, and then a week, like five days before, they said, sorry, the trails are closed, there's a typhoon warning. Yeah. So oh. I, I was, yeah, I was so eager to get up yeah. there at that time. Well, we were lucky this time because uh, mm -hmm. they reduced the number of people that could stay in the cabin, yeah. the 369 cabin. There's 106. Six. 106 and places. And they had it down to 50, and then they just added 10 spaces, uh, I think, right? Something like that. I, I don't know the mechanics. And we but, were in that yeah. mix, so we, we got in. Yeah so, yeah, so I'd like to say we got the permits granted five days before the trip. Yeah. I, I, I received a message on Tuesday, and the following week on Monday, we were on the road. So it was a pretty short, you know, they didn't give us much warning. Yeah. yeah. As far as equipment is concerned, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and I took two hiking poles with me, and I, I ascended with two. It was very, very useful. It's the first time I've ever used two poles when I'm hiking. I used to go with none, and sometimes, one were really useful going up the hill up the mountain but coming down i only used one mm -hmm. because uh we're going a little faster on the downhill and i really needed to pay attention to the rocks and i felt like i needed that extra you know balance with my hand you know it's mm -hmm. like if you're like this you you kind of lose some mobility i think 
Yeah. A little bit. And sometimes when you're going down a steep incline, you can actually put your hand on some rocks exactly. for support. Yeah. When, when you're, you're stepping down. Yeah. And yeah. we had to we had to go around a lot of uh, huge rocks, trees, and things like yeah. that. So uh, it was nice to have my hand handy. <laughs> Think about the FLZ, the carbon black diamond. Yeah. I'm saying that out of order. Awesome sticks. Yeah, the cool thing is it breaks down really tiny mm -hmm. and you could actually fit that inside mm -hmm. your pack. I put the other stick in the backpack. Yeah, and, and they're so them. light. Mm. Yeah. Uh, since my camera ran out of battery mm -hmm. uh, power, mm -hmm. I didn't have any footage of the 369. But basically, if you just imagine this table, mm. sleeping on this table, mm. that's, that's what it is. That's about how much space you had, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the mat? The mat was okay. You had trouble blowing it up a little bit, but I, I think you figured yeah, it out, right? I figured it out. After you blow, yeah. you lock it, and then take your next breath. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I did it this morning. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. I, I, yeah, I, I wanted to test it out one last time, and I, I was successful. Home techs, sleeping, uh, camping mattress. It says self-inflating, but it's kind of a misnomer. I mean, you open the tab, and it, it will fill up a little bit, but you have to top it off with a few breaths, not as much as an air mattress. Here's a tip. I actually doubled it up and just used it for my... Uh, torso and my legs kind of hung off the back and that was fine didn't bother me at all just made my mattress twice as thick I just put a bag over it and this is how I store it in a closet with my wife's wedding dress <laughs> no problem with the sleeping bag quite comfortable well, this pillow kind of sucked I need a new camp pillow but we were lucky because of the lower numbers. There were only 60 people, I believe, and there are 106 spaces, so we were able to spread our stuff out on the upper bunks of, of the cabin. So the cabin is laid out with two lines of beds, and there's an upper bunk and a lower bunk, and all of the beds are just uh, connected. There's no partition or anything. Mm -hmm. So basically, you're just lying in a row of people. A hard plastic cover. It's not just wood. I mean, they have mm. a covering on the wood. Something. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It might it be just it, plastic, as yeah, you said? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, maybe I mean, it's easier to clean. I mean, oh, maybe. You go into the 369, there's two. The left side has not as many people, and the right side right. is slightly larger. And so we have reservations for two beds, 27, 28, on the lower side. <laughs> and uh, a large group of about 12 people took that whole area they just wanted to stay together and and the guy was very you know polite he said well if you want to stay with our group that's fine you can take these these spaces but there's a lot of space on the other side way down by the door so we were like okay fine we want more space so yeah we i was fine with that closer to the door is good closer too. to the door uh easy for nighttime runs to the bathroom <laughs> in a side pocket i had my flip-flops Using them to go from the bunk bed to the bathroom and back at night. I had a problem with that quote unquote ladder. Okay. There were no mm. ladders. It wasn't a ladder. It was just two wooden steps that you had to use to hoist yourself up onto the upper bunks. And uh, for the first couple of times, it was pretty tough. Especially in the dark. Up. There's yeah. no lights in there. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the 369 is a very basic hut. Um, they also have a kitchen, which is uh, which has lighting. Mm, uh, that's separate. Not. Yeah, it's separate. The kitchen is separate. It's below the hut. And we were able to use the kitchen uh, for our dinner and breakfast. Uh, we used the in inside areas to boil water and, and eat. Yeah, they have a metal countertop that goes yeah. mm. three-fourths of the way around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you could just set up your stove. Mm -hmm. I used butane gas for this. The stove worked pretty well. I wasn't getting the flame. Anyway, I ended up using a lighter. I probably did six boils or so in the trip total. We used all of our water. Because we were late coming in the first day, most people had already eaten. So by the time we had 
unpacked, put our, our sleeping bags down. It was like, I think almost six o'clock and most people were already getting ready to sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there were not many people walking yeah. around. There was only mm -hmm. one guy in the kitchen with the cook of cook. one of the groups. You could actually hire your own cook. Yeah, it's, it's a kind of system whereby you, you book. So it's not like you bring your own cook. The cook is actually probably living in that area and she will, yeah, she will receive your, your order and then she will go up the mountain and cook for you. Yeah, I think it was mm. 400 NT for how many meals? For two, I think two. dinner and breakfast. Yeah, we did not know about this. We brought our own food up. I actually checked some uh, information about that and they said it, it was not being used at the moment. So I, yeah, oh. yeah. I well, did. maybe they privately did I don't it know. with yeah. their group, I don't uh, know. but there is an option mm -hmm. normally. Yes, under yes, under normal, normal situations, situations with yeah. no COVID restrictions, I think you can, you, there's, there, there are several links I think you can probably find online that would allow you to, to uh, order dinner and breakfast so you don't have to bring so much food. And if you do Jade, they have that option. That's, that is built into the system. Okay. So the Snow Mountain application system does not have that. You have to find it on another link. Okay, for the yeah. food. For the food, for the cook. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. but Snow, but Jade asked you to pay. They yeah. actually asked you, do you want to pay? Right. Mm. Um, speaking of food, mm. you didn't bring enough. <laughs> well, yeah, I think I, think I, I did skimp on my menu and maybe I wanted to lose some weight. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, I, I didn't have enough, uh, especially for breakfast. I think uh, I could have eaten a couple of more boiled eggs. Yeah, or you know, some bread or something like that. Yeah, um, I think we both had two boiled eggs yep. with that yeah. nice black salt that I brought. Yes, that yeah. was nice. This C2 Summit bag, uh, four liters was just big enough and once everything was in there I could only fold it once and close it because it was so full. Might want to go a little bit bigger on that but then that encourages you to bring more and I think I brought enough food. I was pretty happy with that. After we sewn it we came back to the mm -hmm. cabin and we had coffee. Boiled some more water for the rest of our trip and the good thing was that JC had like a metal thermos that I could pour water in. It didn't matter if it was really hot still. I should mention the altitude sickness or the altitude effects. Mm. My altitude effect was a headache before I went to sleep mm. when, when we stayed at the cabin. And you, mm. it hit you later. Yeah, I, after I, we summoned it. Yeah, I, I think it was, for me, it was combined with exhaustion, lack of food, and lack of caffeine. The caffeine is, is something I need. To, to exist. <laughs> when we got back from the summit, I was exhausted. I was not feeling well. And uh, f fortunately, Jade, <laughs> thank you so much for bringing that coffee. Um, probably saved my life. <laughs> yeah, I'm exaggerating, but, but it did make it things easier going down the mountain because I think after I drank that coffee, it was like, it was like Popeye, you know, when he ate that <laughs> Popeye the Sailor Man. So after I drank the coffee and had that bao that you gave me, which is a bread roll, mm -hmm. I felt a lot better. And Yeah, I brought mm -hmm. just enough food, a little bit extra, and I gave it to you. Good idea, you know, bring a little more than what you yeah. need in case someone in your group or someone you meet on the trail is having a hard time. Then uh, we had a five hour drive after that. So we did have to stop and get some food. Oh, I was, I was ravenous. Famished. On the way home, that was the first time I had ever eaten a 7-Eleven dinner. And it wasn't bad. Okay. <laughs> I drove all the way there, but he drove a good portion of the very rough stuff mm -hmm. through Hawaii. Oh, yeah. uh, all those yeah. hairpin turns yeah. Yeah. in the fog at night. Okay, I'm, I'm glad I did that. I've, I've driven over that road several times, so I think I might be a little bit more familiar than you are. Yeah, um, well, it's just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was basically back around on, on switchbacks, but um, what made the situation worse was the heavy rain and fog. Mm -hmm. So we got, we got some serious fog at the top of Hoan Shan. 
it was I couldn't see more than a meter or two in front of me. Mm -hmm. Going back to the altitude, mm -hmm. uh, one of my colleagues, Maddie, says that she was able to get at just a normal clinic was able to get altitude medicine. Mm -hmm. She took a half pill before her trip to Huan, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she took uh, the doctor said then you take another half on your trip, and if you have like symptoms, you take the whole pill. Okay, I think that's what she said. I don't know the name of the medication, but it just seemed like a routine clinic that she went to. Another thing, one of her partners brought a canister of oxygen. I went to the camping mm. store and I checked okay. it out. Okay. They had a whole bunch of them and they're, they're just air, right? So they're really light, you can pack it mm -hmm. if you have about a space of a thermos. Okay, okay. And I believe the cap, if you take off the cap, there's some kind of apparatus that goes over your mouth and nose. So like if you're really hurting under those uh, altitude conditions, mm -hmm. you can get some pure, some oxygen, some mm -hmm. O2. Mm -hmm. I yeah. wonder how long, how much uh, oxygen you can get with those. Things. Yeah, I'll have to yeah. read the canister next time I go. Mm -hmm. The the Taoyuan uh, camping store has mm -hmm. them. I okay. saw them. Taoyuan is in Zhanghua. The Taoyuan. There's a Taoyuan camping store in Zhanghua. Zhang There's actually two of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And one in, there's one in Taichung. Right, yeah. right, right. Well, fortunately, we didn't need uh, oxygen. We didn't get that far. You know, we didn't, yeah. we didn't feel that badly. I'm yeah. not sure how it would have made you feel when you had that headache. Who knows, yeah. right? That, what's the name of that hotel where they actually have oxygen in the lobby? Oh, it's called uh, Songxue. Yeah. Okay, so Songshui is, is one of the highest hotels in Taiwan. It's about at 3,000 meters. It's located uh, right at the top of Huan, oh, just below Huan Shan, okay? But at the top of the road that goes past Huan Shan. And uh, I've stayed there several times. Uh, and I noticed they have oxygen in the lobby. One, one night, I was going out for a walk and there was a man, <laughs> getting oxygen next to the next to the you know front desk he yeah. was sitting right next to the front desk and he was sitting there yeah and i was thinking oh cool i, I mean that's that's very no, useful no joke yeah yeah, yeah. 3000 meters you start to feel it well i i never i never have slept well at that altitude yeah never so um, it's difficult to get sleep and that's why i prepared medicine for, <laughs> for our trip you know i i prepared three sleeping pills <laughs> i was ready to take two I, <laughs> really i need you know you need i wouldn't sleep. have been able to wake you up <laughs> no, you only I, took one right i only took one <laughs> I but took one. if i hadn't fallen asleep what's the name of that zolpidem zolpidem yeah that's the that's the you know normal uh brand that doctors give you in taiwan okay one of the nice things about this trip was we we could help each other out Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, Jay helped me out on the on the way back down when we were having breakfast, and so I I think I gave I returned the favor uh, for you a couple of times. One was with the plasters on your shoulders. I was having problems with the straps of my bag. Actually, two plasters I had on my shoulders, and again JC saved the day on that one. And another one was your habit of looking at your phone while you're walking. So you'd have the phone in one hand and you'd be walking. And I was like, wait a minute, that this is a recipe for disaster. That's right. So, Good reminders for yeah. everybody out there, yeah. no matter what you're doing, especially, driving. Especially on a mountain trail though. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if you're in the mountains and you, and you hurt, get hurt, you know, who's gonna take you down? Mountain rescues in Taiwan now, I think uh, you are required to pay, aren't you, for the... For I don't know. The... I'm sure, yeah. Well, if, even if, they, if the rescue teams had to go up and carry you down, you couldn't send a, a helicopter to snow because there's a lot of forested areas. Yeah, there is a helicopter landing pad, but it's, you'd still have to yeah. be carried down to that point. That's right. That's... Apart from uh, not bringing enough food, <laughs> Um, I think I was very satisfied with my backpack. I'm fairly happy with the Trail Pro 36 from Deuter. It was just the right size. I, I remembered to bring a glasses case. It's just on the carapiner. And when I'm wearing my glasses, I can actually use this for some kind of storage, like you know, gels or snacks or something like that. 
before, my Ultras Olympus 4 were very nice, um, very comfortable, and I even met another hiker using the same shoes, right, the right. same color, um, very and popular. he said it was good too. Yeah. So I think that's a nice shoe for like, you know, a couple of days hike. If you're still with us for your viewing pleasure, <laughs> you know what we like to do at the end of videos. Mm -hmm. if you know.